Hello, welcome to the Yarn and Yarns YouTube channel. My name is Angela and all of the places you can find me should be linked in the description box below this video. I'm most active over on Instagram where you'll find me as both Rainbow Ange and Yarn and Yarns. Rainbow Ange is kind of my personal account where I chat a lot about the making, the things that you will see here on my videos. And Yarn and Yarns, um, the same name as the channel, is also the name of the bricks and mortar yarn shop that I run in South Wales in the UK. Um, so that account is more kind of related to my shop. But you're welcome to um, follow me over there on Instagram or anywhere else that's linked below. Here on the channel, you'll find me chatting about my adventures in all things fibre related. So knitting, spinning, crochet and weaving. Welcome into one of my weekly chat videos. So this is the video where I sit down and waffle on about what I have been making. I'm trying out my microphone today. It's just out of shot, but um, I've had this microphone a while, but I keep forgetting to use it. And I noticed on my video last week that the sound was a bit up and down. And I think there's something wrong with the built-in microphone on my phone. So I'm giving this a go. Hopefully it'll work. Fingers crossed I'm not going to sit and waffle for half an hour and then have it all mess up, but <laughs> Ooh, keep everything frost for me. Anyway, in the show today I have um, knitting, crochet and spinning to chat to you about um, and also a little bit of chatter at the end just generally about what I have been up to. Then also a little bit of an introduction to a make along that I'll be hosting. Um, starting from August um, in conjunction with the lovely Ellie of Curio Yarns so stick around to hear about that make along. Before I launch into the content proper I just wanted to remind everyone that my 600 subscriber giveaway is still available to enter. Um, if you hop on to the channel and go back a couple of videos um, you'll see that it's there and you can still leave a comment under that video. Um, I just wanted to touch on it quickly because the giveaway is for some patterns um, over on Ravelry and in the weeks since I posted that giveaway there have been some issues with Ravelry um, they have updated their website and it's caused some problems for quite a number of people um, with regards to accessibility. Some people are finding um, that the page is too bright um, and there's symptoms from just um, kind of mild headaches right through to seizures some people have had. Um, you can click on um, the sort of menu that's up by your name and revert the website to the old view but that still involves navigating um, that first page which um, some people have found just too much. Um, so if you are having problems um, accessing Ravelry at the moment and you want to enter that giveaway, just watch the video and then get in touch with me and I'll find a way to um, show you some of the patterns that um, I am hoping to give away. And going forward, if Ravelry hasn't changed their site um, by the time that I draw the winners on Sunday, um, when we get in touch with the winners, if you're having problems with Ravelry, let me know and I will see what I can do. Um, I count two of the designers that I've picked um, to highlight in that giveaway um, amongst my online friends. So I'm sure for at least a good portion of those patterns, I'll be able to find some sort of workaround. Right, so let's get stuck into the making. Um, I think I'll start with crochet this week, um, just because it's pretty quick. Um, I'm still working away on my Babette blanket and I'm at the joining stage. Um, last week when I recorded, um, I showed you a couple of the final squares that I'd made for that blanket. Um, so now I'm in the process of joining it all together and I've done a little bit on that this week. I have a copy of the pattern via, um, um, I think it was an interweave magazine, um, but I think it's available for download now. Um, but the pattern schematics are very good. You make lots of these um, kind of solid granny squares in various sizes. Um, and then the pattern shows you how to lay them all out and join them together. Um, so this is what I have so far. And this is basically the middle of the blanket. Um, so not too much done yet, um, but I'm almost finished um, the next row to join on. Um, the pattern says to sew the 
squares together but I'm actually just doing a slip stitch in the back of the um, squares so it's not the neatest of finished finishes I'm trying to use up the yarn that I've got so I'm using the light pink and um, which probably is um, maybe one of the worst colors in that batch to use because it does stand out a bit more um, but this is a blanket for me and it's a scrappy blanket and I'm not um, amazingly fussed um, about the fact that you'll be able to see um, a little bit of a joining line on the back the one thing that I would definitely do differently if I did this again um, is this has got a definite right side and a definite wrong side because I kept the front of my um, crochet squares facing me um, at all times when I made these squares which I think is probably as written in the pattern um, but you can do that technique where um, you do your first round and then you flip the square over and you do the second round um, and that kind of mimics the effect that you get on the um, sort of on the patterns you know when you're going backwards and forwards along a row there's no real right side or wrong side and if you also do that on a granny square so if you keep sw switching round um, then there's no definite right side or no definite wrong side so um, if I was going to tackle this again I might do that but I mean I do like the the look of the right side and as I say it's just a blanket for me so it doesn't really matter that the two sides are going to look slightly different I've been making mine in um camera rose yarn which I purchased um on a couple of trips to London uh, via Loop, um, which is a very famous yarn shop in London. It's very affordable, pure wool yarn. And um, I, once I've joined it all together, you need to do a couple of sort of border rounds to finish it off. And I don't think I'm gonna have enough of my leftovers to do a complete border around the blanket. Um, so I'm definitely gonna switch in a couple of other um, yarns because um, I don't really want to order any more and have to pay the postage when I've got yarns around that will definitely do the job um, so although this is classed as DK it's very fine um, I've got some balls of Jameson and Smith Spindrift which I think will work well I've also got some leftovers of the um, Pip colour work from Bar Am You and I think these are going to be perfectly interchangeable because this is very much like um, those kind of four ply woolen yarns uh, so yeah not um, tons of progress but I've managed to talk quite a while about it nonetheless <laughs> next up I think we'll go for spinning and the tour de fleece has started um, if you're not familiar with the tour de fleece it's basically an event that happens in the spinning world um, that coincides with the tour de france the cycle race now the tour de france has been postponed because of the um, COVID-19 um, coronavirus pandemic um, but the Tour de Fleece is is going ahead through those dates that the um, race would have been taking part during. So it started on Saturday and um, you can join a team there's um, lots of kind of official ways to sign up for the Tour de Fleece and last year I spun for Hilltop Cloud um, which was a really um, lovely experience my first time spinning in the Tour de Fleece and I joined Team Hilltop Cloud. I had quite a lot of Hilltop Clouds in my um, fibre stash and I spun through various braids and I think I did a video about that so if I can remember and if I can find it I'll pop a link um, to that video if you are interested. This year I decided to not to spin for an official team um, but I decided to set myself a couple of goals then a little group of my friends and um, we have a little WhatsApp chatter group and six of the seven of us that are in that group are spinners and um, so we decided to have like an un unofficial team so we're cheering each other on but my main goal is to spin through and prepare as much of the um, Jacob Ryland fleece as I can so um, if you've been following the channel for a while and then earlier on in the summer, um, I, my lovely friend Charlie sent me my first ever raw fleece. Um, so I am busy I'm trying to process that um, and spin. I'm going to try. I don't know that I will spin through the entire fleece. I've still got some to prep um, during the tour de fleece, but I'm just going to sort of keep that as a focus. And I've made my first skein. Here it is. Um, so I'm trying to spin this from my hand carded Rolags in a long backward draw um, fashion, which gives a woolen style yarn. So this is really light. Um, the yarn um, has plenty of air trapped in it, so it's not as dense um, as a worsted spun yarn. 
and um, so yeah this is my first gain I haven't yet measured this um, I have washed it and kind of finished it yesterday morning so um, I haven't had time to give this a measure yet um, but I'm pleased with how it's turned out it's not the most um, consistent um, but last week I showed off a swatch that I'd knit from a little sample of this so I know when it knits up it's going to be perfectly fine and I think this might end up being the least consistent skein that I make um, because this was carded from um, all of those bits of fleece but I wasn't sure whether I should process in the first place um, so as a beginner processor um, for want of a better description <laughs> Um, I wasn't there were some sort of like scraggly bits some matted bits of the fleece I wasn't really quite sure what to do with but also didn't really want to waste um, and so I decided to card up as much of that as possible um, so yeah and I, I got a good amount of yarn out of it um, there were definitely some problems with the Rolex that I made um, from this batch of the raw fleece um, as I was doing my uh, sort of long draw technique um, there were some bits of um, fleece that had made it into those Rolags that were definitely much shorter so possibly some of the shortcuts maybe some breaks um, in the locks and as I was trying to do the long draw there were some bits that just didn't want to draw because the staple length of the fibre was just so short um, but I managed to get through it I've picked out some bits of those row lags and um, I've made myself a decent skein of yarn I think um, and it's all great um, for my kind of learning process um, this as I say it's my first ever from fleece to yarn experience and there's so so much to learn and this is just one um, type of well it's a crossbreed and um, that I'm starting with but there are so many different breeds of sheep to explore um, and I'm enjoying the process so so much um, and I am learning heaps along the way so um, yeah I don't mind the fact that my yarn's not going to be perfect. If you've watched any of those videos that I've already posted about the process, um, you'll have heard me say that I didn't do tons of research about what I was meant to do. Um, I just got stuck in and I find that for me, that's a really good way to learn. And yes, I make mistakes along the way and I will probably end up, you know, wasting some fleece that maybe I should have processed uh, and maybe processing some fleece that I should have discarded. Um, but for me, it's the best way to learn and um, I'm really enjoying it. So that is definitely the main goal of all of these lovely fibre related hobbies that we have, isn't it? Alongside that um, spin on my wheel, because I'm doing quite a lot of prep um, and not much spinning at the moment, I wanted to have some actual spinning projects. So I've got a few drop spindle projects on the go that I'm hoping to finish. Um, so I've got the two that I showed in my video last week. Um, the um, natural f um, British wool mix that I've got on the Bluebell spindle um, from Wildcraft and also the Nelly and Eve naturally dyed um, fibre club from January um, that I'm spinning on my Whimsy wooden wool spindle. I'm going to try and get those finished in the period of Tour de Fleece as well. The spin on the bluebell spindle should be fairly quick I just need to pick it up and set my mind to it so I might remember to grab that on my way downstairs after I finish this video and perhaps try and spin through the rest of that fiber today but um, more even more excitingly than those two projects that I've already got going I have also got a new spindle to chat to you about I am having a go at a spinning project on a supported spindle which is a type of spindle that I've not tried before and I managed to catch an update from Enid Ashcroft and Enid is a spindle maker here in the UK and I heard about her via um, Lisa from the Soulful Spinning podcast and Lisa has several of her spindles and I stalked Enid's updates and missed out on a couple because her spindles sell out really quickly um, but then a few weeks ago I managed to catch one of her updates and I was able to treat myself to a beautiful Turkish spindle which I'll show off when I've got a project on there and also this supported spindle and in my excitement I messaged Lisa and said I have managed to get a spindle and it just so happened that in that um, same update um, Enid had posted two supported spindles and I purchased one and Lisa post uh, purchased the other which was quite funny. <laughs> 
But here is my beautiful um, spindle. And actually, let me just pop the video on pause. It won't pause for you, but uh, for me. Um, and I'm going to go and grab, I've got a little card with um, a bit more detail about this beautiful, beautiful spindle. Um, so I'm gonna, just going to grab that so I can tell you a little bit more. So when you purchase a spindle from Enid, she sends you this lovely um, little tag attached to the spindle with all of the information on the spindle. So mine is a cup style supported spindle and it weighs 39 grams and it's made from burr oak cherry and brass so let me grab the spindle again um so this is the burr oak and um, i saw the pictures of the spindles on um enid ashcroft's instagram feed and i was immediately drawn to this one and by the time i got to her etsy page the other supported spindle had gone to lisa as it would <laughs> turn out um but i was happy that this one was left because this one was my first choice um i love this because um the oak is really sort of like pitted and just beautiful it's got a lot of character to it um it's yeah it's just a beautiful thing and then i guess the shaft is cherry and then on the bottom there is this little nubbing of copper um and i guess that helps to give it a nice smooth spin I don't have a specific um, supported spindle bowl so um, usually you spin um, on a supported spindle in some sort of um, round container um, but um, I do have this lovely and I think it might also be copper um, little bowl that was sent to me by my dear friend Lisa um, and it's got friend with a little heart in the bottom and I have been finding that this is the perfect thing um, for spinning. I don't want to mess up my, <laughs> my spinning by not paying attention. It's the perfect thing for um, spinning from this supported spindle. Um, I am really excited to be working on this. Uh, this colour is blowing out a little bit. Um, it's another overcast day here. You might be able to hear it's very windy um, in the background. Um, but it was a bit tricky to get going to start with, um, but my consistency is definitely improving. Um, I think you can probably see that on the yarn that's wound around the shaft there. And I'm spinning some beautiful fiber from um, Smith Studio Designs, and you can find Smith Studio D Designs on um, Instagram, and she also has her own website. Um, and I purchased from her a lovely set of fiber called I can spin a rainbow pastel edition um, and it's 100% Corriedale and you get this lovely tonal grey and then also um, another bump of this pastel-y rainbow. Um, so I've split my fibre into quarters and I'm just spinning through it on the supported spindle and I'm trying to do um, sort of 10, 15 minutes every day um, to get my practice in and to try and get used to this technique. Um, it's definitely taking some use, getting used to, um, but I'm really enjoying the process. And so after a um, sort of few minutes practice, my consistency is definitely improving. So yeah, I think I am definitely a supported spindle convert and I'm not sure if I will end up um, spinning through the whole 100 grams during the Tour de Fleece um, but as I say I'm just going to do a little bit every day and see how far I get and my aim is rather than just kind of spin the fibre um, as such it's more to practice with the supported spindle everything for my spinning exploits um, that just leaves knitting for this week and I've got a finished object to show you and two works in progress so I might as well start with the finished object I wasn't expecting to have a finished object to show you this week um, my knitting mojo is still pretty low um, I'm still not back to my usual level of mental um, energy still finding things a little bit of a struggle and I had some news at the weekend which is a bit of a blow which I'll talk about um, on another episode um, but that's kind of knocked me back a little bit but um, yesterday I was able to spend some socially distanced time with some friends and we had a little bit of a knit and it inspired me to get out my hand spun sock project and I actually sat for the rest of yesterday after I'd um, seen my friends and I finished my second sock. Um, so my first ever pair of hand spun socks are finished. Let me try and grab a sock blocker and put one of these on. Um, so this was spun from some fibre that I purchased on D-Stash. Um, the fibre was from Wildcraft. Um, so the 
same uh, lovely seller here in the UK um, from whom I purchased that bluebell spindle that I showed off last week. Um, and this was one of their club colorways from a couple of years ago. Um, and I spun a fractal three ply. Um, so basically I split my braid of fiber into three chunks and then I split each of those chunks into a different number of strips. Um, I can't remember exactly what my uh, sort of proportions were. It might have been something like um, four, eight and 12, maybe, I can't remember. I'm trying to get better with my record keeping for my spinning, um, but I've not been the best at that in the past. My three ply turned out to be um, about a sport to DK weight. Um, so I knit my socks toe up, um, I kind of improvised, um, I used, I did a quick search on Ravelry for a basic sort of sport weight sock pattern and I can't remember um, what, just to give me an idea of my, the numbers to start with, I can't remember what pattern I decided to go with um, but I'll link it down below. And I did a little bit of experimenting, I don't know if you can remember, on this first sock um, I think I increased up to maybe like a 50 four 56 stitch um but then i decided that was a bit too wide so i decreased back down to a 48 stitch um sock and yeah just knit away um kept trying it on and popped in the heel where i thought it needed to go um and then did my usual length ish for the leg um, and then yeah the second sock sort of flew off the needles once I get go once I got going and um, so obviously they don't match exactly um, but they're definitely a pair and um, these should be some really nice warm cozy socks um, I'm really looking forward to wearing these and I haven't yet blocked these they probably could do with a bit of a soak just to even out the um, stitches a little bit more and uh, the hand spun yarn is not you know super consistent because it's spun by me not by a machine um so yeah i think and a blocking would probably um be of benefit just to um even out some of those stitches a little bit more um so yeah hand spun socks pair number one are finished um i have been keeping those in this gorgeous um project bag from emma of eldenwood craft and i've still got quite a, a bit of yarn left um again i cast these off last night so i haven't yet weighed to know um how much yarn i ended up using in this pair and i've got a, another skein of three ply that's of a similar weight um from that i spun recently from um attic spin die um for my second pair of socks so now i've got my um sort of hand spun sport weight slash DK weight recipe um, I should be able to get those on the needles um, without having to faff around with the recipe too much and I might switch back to my preferred top down um, I'm not really a toe up sock knicker sock, sock knicker <laughs> sock knitter I definitely prefer um, cuff down um, so yeah now I have a rough recipe then I might convert back to that and as I'm holding these um, it occurs to me that when I finish a sweater, I usually do a bit of a sweater dance, but I never really think to show um, socks being worn. So maybe if I remember, if I have time, um, perhaps I'll put um, a little bit of a clip of some happy feet um, in this video, we'll see. Next up, I have a work in progress and I chatted to you about this work in progress last week. Um, it's a test knit that I am doing for the lovely Jenny, who is Owl About Yarn. And um, I think I'm, I didn't show the sock, but I said that I would check with her to see if she was okay for me to share um, picture progress of this test knit. And she absolutely said that's fine, so brilliant. Um, and I have a finished sock to show you. And I have cast on the second, but I haven't really started the patterning yet. I've just done the cuff. Um, so this is the pattern um, that will be released at some point in the future from Jenny. It's called the Shive Light Socks. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that totally correctly I'll put the name on the screen 
and um, if I remember I should have brought her um, the actual pattern up so I could read but I think it's the name for um, the sunlight as it sort of dapples through trees um, I think it was it was something like that um, which is very apt for this gorgeous lacy pattern um, that Jenny has designed and these are just flying off the needles um, again my knitting mojo has been a little bit low um, when I do pick these up um, it's very addictive and you want to kind of it's a 10 row pattern repeat and you want to kind of like do the 10 rows and you think oh that was really quick I'll do another 10 uh, so yeah it didn't really take too long to get through this first sock um, in terms of knitting time um, perhaps I'll pop that one on the, the blocker again um, while I've got it handy um, so I'm knitting these from some yarn that I had in stash it's Wendy Rome um, sadly the company who distributed Wendy um, has gone into administration so um, you might still be able to pick up a few skeins of this but whether it will come back I don't know so Wendy Rome and I'm using the colour 2006 which is called Windermere and yeah I, I sold this for a little while in the shop and I snaffled a skein or two um, for my own stash um, and this is a really pretty kind of purple colorway but it's got sort of blue and green undertones um, it's a very complex color I really like it um, so yeah that is one sock down um, I actually ended up knitting these this is a slightly thicker sock yarn um, it's a four ply but it's slightly thicker than I'm used to from say an opal or a um, West Yorkshire spinners so I decided to go for a 2.5 millimeter needle and because this is a lacy pattern um, which has got a bit more stretch and give um, although if I did a vanilla sock um, at a 2.5 it'd be too big um, I figured because of the stretchiness of the lace I could probably get away with it and this fits just fine um, so yeah just needed to crack on and get the second sock finished um, and then um, once the pattern is um, due to be released I will um, definitely let you know. And then the other thing that I've been working on, the only other thing that I've been knitting on is James's sweater, which is the Dude, uh, patterned by Andrea Rangel. I showed this off last week and I'm working my way through the sleeves. Um, so I finished the first sleeve. I think I might have been somewhere in this colour work panel when I showed it off last time. Um, this is my least favourite part of the sweater. Um, it just is a bit of a pain in the bum to knit that chart <laughs> um, and it takes me quite even though this is chunky yarn and I think the chart pattern is maybe about 30 something rows so not that many but it takes me several evenings to get through it um, but then once I got through it I zoomed through this the, the top of the sleeve obviously I'm decreasing um, as well but yeah that just flew off the needles in um, sleeve one is done and I am wading my way through it's like working my way through treacle <laughs> that color work pattern again on the second sleeve so I've just about reached the halfway point and um, so if I put my mind to it um, I reckon I could slog through the rest of that in an evening I've got about 15 rows left but for some reason once I've done about seven or eight rows of that pattern I'm done I'm done with it <laughs> I don't mind the colour block sections, which are just um, one by one rib um, in those solid colours. And I don't mind the other um, colour work pattern, which is this um, just kind of zigzaggy type pattern. It's just that that section there. And I know that it makes the sweater, but yeah, it's just not, not fun for me to knit. Um, but James is loving how it's, look, how it's looking, so fingers crossed it'll be worth the effort in the end so yeah that's it for everything that I've been making um, goals for this week um, carry on with my tour de fleece spinning I'd like to get the second sock um, finished for Jenny's test knit and I'd like to um, add a few more sections to the Babette blanket and finish that sleeve and maybe start the next section on James's cardigan so maybe for the next few weeks if I don't get too distracted um you'll probably see the same projects over and over which I hope you don't mind um but I'm kind of feeling motivated to work on this particular set of projects at the moment so um, while my knitting mojo is low I'm just gonna go with it and do what I feel like doing and you watch your come along next week and I'll probably be working on four completely different projects <laughs> So um, as mentioned at the top of the video, um, I just wanted to give you a little heads up about a make along that I'll be hosting with the lovely Ellie of Curio Yarns. And from the 1st of August until Halloween, we're going to be um, either 
knitting um, Ellie's patterns or using um, Ellie's yarn and fiber um, and we're gonna have a little make along and there'll be some prizes um, Ellie's got her sorted out I shall be um, figuring mine out but one of the prizes will definitely be the bag that I showed off last week the lovely Star Wars bag um, Ellie has I think about 15 or so patterns on Ravelry already um, and if again if you're having problems accessing Ravelry then either get in touch with me or get in touch with Ellie I'll look I shall link her details below um, and we can help you get access to some PDFs if um, you're having problems with Ravelry at the moment. Um, that cowl, as I say, won't start for another month or so. And in the meantime, um, Ellie is going to be releasing. She's got a whole bunch of lovely new patterns um, that she's planning on releasing. And each time she releases a pattern, the pattern will be free for the first week. Um, so there'll be plenty of opportunity to um, grab a pattern um, from Ellie and join in that make along. Um, she dyes yarn and um, if you've been following for a while I knit my um, Mount Pleasant tee, the brown um, sort of t-shirt from um, Ellie's lovely yarn and she also dyes fibre so if you're a spinner and you want to join in with a bit of spinning um, then she's got some fibre in the shop as well. Uh, more details on that to come um, as we get closer to the make along but I just wanted to kind of put the idea out there, introduce that to you and Ellie chats about it on her channel as well. Uh, so yeah that's kind of everything um i hope you're doing okay as i say i feel like i'm still kind of like plodding through my weeks a little bit um i'm not feeling uh, super energetic or super motivated to um do things at my normal sort of level of productivity um but you know what that's okay um sometimes are like that you know sometimes your knitting and creative mojo is high sometimes it isn't and um i've been reading or listening to a lot of audiobooks which I think I mentioned before that's been giving me a huge amount of pleasure um, I've been spending a lot of my kind of creative energy has gone into kind of prepping carding my um, fiber for um, that tour de fleece spin um, so I have been doing something I've been working with my hands but not um, finding my usual joy um in the sort of kind of switching between projects and casting on new things that um perhaps you kind of have come to expect from me <laughs> here on the channel if you followed for a while um but i'm sure that will come back um but we've got another couple of i've got another few difficult weeks to get through um and as i say i'll chat about that in another episode but um hopefully i will keep chipping away and slowly slowly um, my creative productivity will increase again and the mojo will come back to me <laughs> how has your week been um what are you working on how are you feeling let me know in the comments below as always um i love to chat to you and um yeah i hope you're doing i hope you're doing okay um some lockdown measures are easing here in the UK um, but that's kind of bringing with it its own issues and problems and I also wanted to um, touch once again on the something that's really important to me um, now and for the rest of my life going forward um, the Black Lives Matter movement. Um, I spoke about it a few weeks ago and it was kind of why um, the death of George Floyd was kind of why I took my little break from YouTube and um, there was a lot to process um, on top of the COVID-19 stuff, on top of some family issues, on top of some work issues. Um, but I haven't really kind of mentioned specifically the Black Lives Matter movement here on the channel and I've noticed on my social media feed um, the kind of like big there was lots of posting about it the big kind of push for awareness um and kind of amplifying black voices is starting to die down a bit um at least in my social media feeds so um it's i think it's important that we keep um that movement in mind now and forever i am continuing to try and post things um over on my stories in instagram that i'm finding useful um just resources and um, quotes information um so yeah if you follow me over there then anti-racism is something that you're trying to work on too um then please tag me in any um, post that you see that you find useful um and check out my stories for some of the things that i'm finding to be of help maybe they will help you too 
I never I really feel like I stumble around when I chat about that I never know exactly the words that um, I want to use but um, but it's very important to me that I try and talk about um, anti-racism and um, inclusivity in all sorts of ways That's everything from me this week um, I hope that you have had a good week um, if for any reason you've had a week that's a bit of a struggle no you're not alone um, I'm sending you lots of love and good wishes um, thank you all so much for being here for watching and um, for supporting the channel by liking subscribing by chatting with me below um, I was also so very grateful to receive a coffee donation this week um, so thank you so much for um, anyone who has in the past or um, continues to support the channel um, in that way too until we get to spend time together again i hope you get to do some of the things that you enjoy great big willy hugs to you all bye for now <laughs>